Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason, and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel, and I'm here in the Dice Tower to begin a series that I'm calling Games for a Healthy Mind. I'm a psychotherapist by trade, it's my day job, and I use games and therapy all the time, and I'm a big believer that games have a lot to contribute to our happiness and to our health and all those good things that we want in life. So um, the first game that I'm going to feature is The Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, the Pursuit of Happiness was designed by David Chirkop and Adrian Abella, published by Artipia Games and Stronghold Games. It's a couple years old, but I think it is <laughs> kind of a, a goodie, so to speak. Um, it is a one to four player work replacement game. Goes up to five to six with an expansion, but uh, don't I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Plays just fine at that one to four. Um, it is a Euro style work replacement game, and. It's in the mid to light range, somewhere around there. It's not kind of a brain burning engine type thing. It's one of those games where it's like you acquire a thing, you trade it for a that, and you get a this, and you get a that, and you turn a that into points. And whoever can do that the most efficiently is the winner. Uh, upon that basic skeleton is a theme where you are living life. You are getting into relationships. You are getting a job and promoted in that job. And eventually, hopefully, you'll retire. And you're getting life projects, getting pets, and you're getting things, buying things, going places. Uh, it's a emulating kind of a, a well-lived life, uh, so to speak. And I have to say, as a psychotherapist, I'm really excited about this game because there's a lot that it gets right. Uh, it isn't just throwing a bunch of random life things at you. Uh, it really does try to emulate um, what I would call a happy, healthy life. So um, I would like to show you uh, what I mean. So without further ado, let's go to the videotape. All right, so here I have a basic game of Pursuit of Happiness laid out. Um, the game occurs in rounds, and even the rounds are thematic. <laughs> Uh, so you start off as a teenager, and then you're going to go through, I guess, this uh, by decade by decade, so 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, if you're blessed to live that long, 60s and 70s and beyond. So during each decade, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be spending your workers, uh, quote unquote, which in this case is time. So you're going to be spending time doing things. The basics, uh, you can spend time doing things like studying and playing, which gets you the uh, relevant resources. So studying will get you some books and creativity play or oh, play will give you uh, some creative points um, so what these represent are you know ways that you're developing yourself in order to be able to dedicate yourself to actual things that become the that re kind of fill out your life and uh, kind of lead you towards uh, that fulfilled life that we're all looking for so how do we do that so once we have the resources we can start to apply ourselves so First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a project, and I'm going to write a novel. How wonderful is that? Uh, in order to do so, um, gonna have to spend some creativity. You know, you can't just like uh, plagiarize or copy off somebody. It has to come from yourself. And when you accomplish a thing, you will get something out of it. Uh, along the way, as I write my fiction novel, I'm gonna be able to spend more time and basically get better at the thing. So like the more of these I spend, I'm going to progress down the track, I'm going to write a teen drama, and eventually I'm going to get a bestseller. I'm going to be famous and popular and earn lots of money. <laughs> uh, so that is an example of action that you can do. You get stuff, you can also buy some headphones, you can buy some stuff, you can buy some activities. This is what you do basically with your money that you earn. Uh, where do you earn your money? I'm glad you asked. Uh, you can get a job. So this is a lab assistant, and uh, you can put in some resources over here, and you're going to get out some money uh, along the way. So obviously, I'm going to put my work on the Get a Job Space to do that. I can also start a relationship. So I think, Kaylin, it looks here uh, very fetching. So I'm going to start a relationship with Kaylin, and eventually that will also uh, provide me with resources. All of these things get added to my personal space, and I'll have a lot to say about the personal space in just a second. Uh, but very quickly, a couple other uh, relevant aspects. Um, the more you try to do, the more stressed out you get. <laughs> um, there's a space where you can get more, re uh, more workers, uh, but it will stress you out. If you proceed into this area, you're so stressed out, you start to lose time. So you get to lose some of these workers. So there's kind of a trade-off there. Also... Short-term happiness, what this basically does is if you get cards that give you short-term happiness, like eSports over here will make you happy, makes me happy. 
uh, you'll be able to be happier and happier round by round. And that means that it'll be easier to do these actions. So like, you're so happy you're creative and you know, the, the pen just flows, right? Uh, on the other side, if you become unhappy, then it takes more and more creativity to churn that, uh, that novel out and that becomes more and more difficult. So there's lots of buttons to push, lots of things to manage. Um, but that's the basic gameplay. Let me get into the fun stuff. So this is what a personal player space looks like in a normal, happy, healthy game of Pursuit of Happiness when you reach the adult rounds, you start to kind of fill out other different parts of your life. So I'm in a happy relationship. Uh, my uh, girlfriend, Caitlin, is making me happy, providing me with all these uh, different uh, aspects to fulfill my life, and I'm hopefully doing the same for her. Um, I have a fulfilling job. Uh, I'm putting in, you know, a little bit of time and resources and I'm getting a fair wage as a result. And I also have a little bit of spare time. My life isn't just work and relationship. I can uh, devote myself to a personal pursuit, which is writing fiction. How wonderful is that? However, let me show you what a brain in the real world looks like. Now that is what a brain looks like in real life. I want to write this novel. I've had this novel idea since college, or at least just get something on the paper. But you know what, I have, you know, all this, I don't have much spare time. I should learn something useful. I should learn to cook. You know, I'm, I'm eating out all the time and I need, I need to save some money. And I don't like the way I look. I've gained like, you know, about 15 pounds in the last little while. So I should go jogging. Maybe I should spend some time in jogging. But then if I'm jogging, I can't like, you know, what am I doing that for? I'm not, you know, bettering myself, I'm not advancing my career. I bought this book at Barnes and Nobles about website design and, <laughs> Oh, there's just no time. So every time I try to write down fiction, I don't actually make progress. I cause myself stress. And I try to make progress again, and I cause myself more and more stress. Speaking of stress, uh, I'm really, really unhappy in my job. I just spend all this time at work, uh, and I, they, I feel like they just get the best part of me. I feel like they're sucking any little bit of intelligence I have, they're just taking it for themselves. Uh, I have no desire to just hang out with anybody because I'm after I'm after I come home from work, I'm completely fried from talking with coworkers, going to meetings, and all that. And what am I getting paid for? I just I, I can't afford anything. The money is out the door in student loans and medical bills and car payments and uh, stress, stress. And my relationship. I, I met this girl. She seemed like, it seemed like such a good idea to get together with her. But then she's like, oh, we need to spend more time together. So I'm spending all this time with her and I'm giving her as much as I can give her. But I really, truly feel like I'm getting nothing. And I'm stressed out and it's just stressing me out over and over again. And it's getting to the point. I'm getting to the stress point where I just take all of that and I just got nothing to give no more. So in game mechanism terms, uh, the main ways to acquire stress is having too many cards in your personal tableau or by putting too many of your time markers in one space. Uh, and you would be absolutely surprised how close that is. In my experience as a psychotherapist, I encounter situations like this nearly on a daily basis where people are just overloading themselves and causing themselves so much stress. So. How do I walk it back? Well, check this out. Uh, so, I, you know, uh, when it comes to the, your activities uh, that cause you stress, well, there's a sneaky word that I, you know, said a couple of times as I was going through my little monologue here, should. I should learn to cook. Should you learn to cook? Um, you know, I think we have, uh, we have a little bit of time on that. We're just gonna, you know, move that along. I don't think you should uh, be cooking or anything like that. Uh, you should be jogging. Well, obviously that's a good idea, but if you have something else going on, I'm going to let you slide on that. I think there's time for all sorts of stuff. We're going to take the shit out of that too. It's almost like if you've ever played with your iPhone, you, you double click the home button or whatever there is on the newer iPhones, you see all the background apps and you realize that your battery is just being sucked away by all these programs. So what are we doing? We are closing all those apps. We are taking all of those shoulds that are clogging up our brain and we're gonna free ourselves up and we're gonna commit. We're gonna decide one thing that either makes us happy or makes us you know, feel like we need to progress and we're gonna stick with it and we're gonna just spend time and progress through it. Or we are going to say, you know what? That's not what I wanna do. 
I'm going to get something in here. And there's a lot of permission in that. There's a lot of permission in beating back the shoulds and taking things one at a time. De-stress, de-stress, de-stress. Jobs are harder, right? <laughs> this is your personal time. Um, but we always, we all have to have jobs. And sometimes, many, many times, we get stuck in jobs that just feel like that there's this weight, you know? Um, I guess the only thing I have to say about that is to be aware of imbalances. So if you really feel like this side, you know, you're spending too much of your personal time and resources and you're not getting the fair wage, a lot of people don't, aren't even that reflective, right? They just, they don't even get to that point of just that, that moment of stepping back and assessing the balance, you know, the inputs and the outputs. So what I'm inputting, is it worth what I'm getting? Right. And uh, so this is an occasion where it's like, you know what, I'm just going to realign some things and hopefully, uh, you know, I can get myself to where, you know, there's a proper balance over here. And if there isn't, then I can look for something new. Relationships. Whoo, boy. <laughs> I'm a family therapist, so I'm, I'm very aware of how relationships can kind of go wrong. So. To me, um, you know, just as an example, oftentimes, you know, you get the situation where people feel like they're giving a lot and not getting uh, what they're putting in, which may be true in some cases, but maybe sometimes you're giving so much, but you're not giving what the partner is actually asking for. Um, you're giving gifts and you're giving, you know, um, you know, attention in your way, but they're actually asking for it in another way and they'd be willing to give it to you if there was a little bit more alignment involved. So, you know, in order to establish a little bit of balance in your relationship, you know, you actually have to, you know, um, <laughs> uh, in the game term, it would be like kind of meet the precondition, but in, a, in real life term, it would be, you know, actually listen to what the person wants. They're asking for uh, some creativity and you're giving them all this. You're giving them this and saying, hey, you know, come on. And, uh, sometimes a person is asking for a specific thing or they're asking for it in a certain way or there's just kind of a mismatch there. And, you know, one of the aspects of personal therapy is to kind of clear out all the junk and get people talking about what they really want so that they can really start feeding each other. Hey, look at that. A nice, clean, healthy brain. I'm telling you guys, this game is so full of gems. I'm going to give you one more <laughs> in terms of mental health. And it's the distinction between short-term happiness and long-term happiness. So short-term happiness in the game lasts from round to round, and it gives like very kind of temporary benefits, and then it resets to zero at the end of each round, while long-term happiness is your victory point, and it only goes up. The thing I wanted to stress about the way the game integrates short-term and long-term happiness is you have to have everything going on. You have to live a well-rounded life in order to achieve a really fulfilling life, which is track, um, advancing on the long-term goal. I think sometimes in our lives, we kind of overrate certain things. So I have a, uh, a very advanced job over here, chief of medicine. And I think people figure it's like, you know what? My job is whatever, but I can't wait to retire. Here is the retirement you know uh and guess what it only gives you four long-term happiness which is actually not um very much considering i'm already in the 50s <laughs> around the track over here or maybe you know you're lonely or maybe you're you're with somebody and you just want to get married or where you're, you just want to get married you just want to start having babies and establishing a family in the game that'll get you raise family two points you might get some short-term happiness out of all this stuff, um, but that short-term happiness, you know, or, or maybe in the case of uh, retiring, you'll get some relaxation. So it's kind of like de-stressing in order to, um, you know, get these things. But if you want to live uh, that really fulfilling life, if you want to take a long-term view of your life, you can't kind of put your, all your eggs in one basket. You know, you have, you know, uh, activities and things that you want to do. You have... Uh, some pro life project that you want to complete. You have some overall goals that you want to meet. Uh, you have some preconditions over here. Uh, you have all these things in this game. Uh, in a way, the Euro point salariness uh, makes a pretty profound point about a happy life. 
It's everything. Don't just put your eggs in one or two baskets. So the last aspect I wanted to talk about very, very quickly is this idea of uh, quote unquote second life. Um, and I think the game is trying to go for that, right? It's trying to give you that sense of like, okay, there's your life and your real life, but you can construct a whole life. You can tell a story off of it. And I want to be really clear. Um, this is a Euro game. It's a work replacement game. And once you're in it, once you're really sitting there and you're puzzling out the stuff, the theme can disappear pretty fast. And you can do some kind of wonky things that take you out of the theme. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, this game will immerse you. Uh, in a second life, in a way that other games do. I mean, not really board games necessarily. I haven't really found the board game that does that. But, you know, video games, I think the big one uh, that came out this year in 2020 is Animal, Animal Crossing. Um, I'm old enough to remember that there was a game actually called Second Life, uh, which was this uh, kind of transport, right? Uh, I think the idea is like, you know, it's escapist, and I'm making a whole new life, I'm taking a break from my old life. I just want to say really quickly that I'm, as a psychotherapist, I'm a proponent of that. I'm a proponent of generally um, making space in your brain to imagine something different in your life. Uh, I think that when it comes to our everyday, we can get stuck in a rut. We can get into that, you know, that that tableau that I showed where, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff is jammed in there and we're trying to do so many things at once. We get all stressed or maybe there's not enough in there. We're just completely bored. <laughs> but there's a narrative that sets in. There's a story that we in our life that just kind of gets stuck in our head. And when a second life activity goes the best is when it can present to you something different and it gives you a little bit of leverage to kind of bust out of your particular stuckness and, you know, create something new. Um, obviously they can go really wrong. Um, you know, they can be too escapist and you can kind of like, you know, escape, try to escape from your life and that's not great. Um, and yeah, and this is not, this is not a game that will do that obviously because the theme is, you know, it's, it's on top of like a Euro structure, but, um, it's at least resonant on an intellectual level. Everything here makes sense. And if you want it to, you can play a couple of games of this and I've played this solo. I might spend an entire evening playing this game solo, imagining different life's lives that I live, you know, imagining that I was with this girl or that girl, had this job and got retired this one time or did a bunch of life projects this other time. And I think it's really cool to like let my brain uh, go into that space and then, you know, I come back to it and it, like my, my life just, I feel like my brain is a little bit more free to imagine different possibilities. So, uh, you know, I mean, you have to bring that to the game, you know, where uh, some other maybe product can kind of bring that to you a little bit more, but it's there. Um, I am so happy that I have the pursuit of happiness in my life. It's never leaving my collection. Uh, and I do play this in therapy. So if you're around and you want to play some, some of that in therapy, I'll be more than happy <laughs> to indulge. Uh, so uh, final verdict for um, pursuit of happiness, seal of excellence, eight out of 10. Uh, I'm generally only going to uh, demonstrate Seal of Excellence games in this series, uh, the creme de la creme of what I use in therapy and that I find fun and informative. I think those two things go hand in hand. Uh, and maybe at some point I can get Tom and the boys in the Dice Tower to approve a Seal of Flourishing uh, to mark the fact that I have said this is a great game for psychotherapy and just, you know, living a great life uh, with a very, very happy, healthy brain. So um, until next time, this is Jason reminding you that if you could change your mind, you could change the world. And this game right here can help you do just that. Later, everybody.